tunapoongea kuhusu covenant we know that the bible contains several covenants isn't it biblia ina maagano mengi na for many years we have been made to believe that the old testament or covenant is the 39 books making the 27 books by default the new covenant isn't it yes. and from that uh, foundation a lot of deception zime thrive a lot of things a lot of practices that are not true zimekuwa uh, zime penetrate kwa the so called church and i believe many people out there wako na maswari why some things are not working wamejitolea but they are not working yeah they are not seeing results and the so called christianity inabaki ni kama you know ni superstition there is no power there is no life yeah but i want to believe that things are becoming clear for many people na tutaendelea kufundisha kule nje every opportunity you get you teach amen and so when we come here we come so that we can get equipped we can get the understanding bwana asifiwe i want us to start by reading second corinthians chapter 3 Second Corinthians chapter 3 that is where the Old Testament is mentioned by Paul and we will understand what he was talking about Second Corinthians chapter 3 I want to read verse 14 Inasema hivi But their minds were blinded for until this day the same veil remains uh, remains unrifted in the reading of the old testament because the veil is taken away in in Christ but even to this day when Moses is read a veil lies on their hearts nevertheless when one turns to the lord the veil is taken away so this is paul speaking to the church in Corinth and he's saying to them that of course to meanza katikati ya the story will uh, come back to the same but i just want us to focus on how he mentioned or how he uses the term old testament anasema for until this day he says but their minds were blinded for until this day the say, the veil remains unlifted or not taken away when the old testament is read so in other words the old testament that paul is talking about it brings blindness agano mze ambalo Paul anazungumzia hapa anasema ya kwamba upofu uko katika mawazo yao na mpaka saa siku ya leo ya ile veil ama pasia inabakia wakati agano mzee inaposomwa bwana asifiwe i know there are people who have resolved not to read the that nine books because of this verse if by the reading of the old testament a veil covers the mind so should we read it by default the answer is but you see if 
your definition of the Old Testament is not the same definition of Paul, then you will apply whatever he is saying on the wrong thing. You will assume that the 39 books brings blindness. But the question we need to answer today is whether the Old Testament is the 39 books. Because if it is, then definitely we should not read. But if it is not, then we should seek to understand what the Old Testament is from Paul's perspective. Hallelujah. We have so many uh, testaments or covenants. By the way, some versions I know they use the word Old Covenant. Old Covenant, Old Testament is one and the same thing. Wakati tunazungumzia kusu covenant, wakati tunazungumzia kusu testament, those words zina change or meaning the same thing. Okay? So there is no difference between a testament and a, and a covenant. Alright? Tuko pamoja? So, Paul, akizungumzia wa Korintho na wambia, ya kwamba, uh, today, even today, wakati agano mze inaposomwa, kuna upofu, kuna pasia, ambayo yiko juya, juya watu. Yeah? Their minds are blinded. But, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. That means, you cannot receive, uh, you know, the clarity of understanding if you have not turned to the Lord. And you are turning to the Lord from, from what? You are turning from the old covenant or from the Old Testament to the Lord. Can I say this? That turning is repentance. <laughs> to turn is to repent. So we are turning from uh, the Old Covenant to the Lord, and that is how the veil is. So where is the end of Mahali Uwekelewe mikono, the veil ikutoke. Huwezi ukaenda milimani kuomba 40 days prayer and fasting at ndiyo veil ikuondoke. There is only one way to take away the veil. Which is turning to turning to Christ. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 7. Nasema hivi. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for Meaning, the reason why we have the second covenant is because the first one was faulty. The writer of Hebrews is trying to establish a, a reasoning, an argument. He is dealing with the Hebrews who are trying to continue walking in the old covenant. And he's trying to tell them, we have a new covenant. In fact, we have a better covenant established on better promises. And he's trying to tell them, guys, if the first one was okay, then we will not have sought for another one. Meaning, the first covenant had faults. 
And he continues to say, because finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to read them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says the Lord. Now, please note that when he says, behold, he puts those words in a quotation mark, meaning he is quoting somewhere, they are not his words. He is quoting from the, script, the scriptures to support his point. But there is a point to Pali Natatu Weze Kushika Vizuri. He says, because finding fault with them, who are them? Where was the fault? Was the fault with the covenant or with the people? With the people, not the covenant. But he begins by saying, for if that first covenant had been faultless. So, what is faultless? Or rather, what is this that has faults? The people or the covenant? Yeah? Ninini kona dosari? Niagano ama ni watu? Let me go back to verse 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless. Can we get another version? Kama hilo agano halinge kuwa na dosari. Hakunge kafutwa agano la pili. Message? It's the first plan. The old covenant. It was. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. If that first covenant had worked out, then the second covenant would not have been needed, isn't it? Yeah. Meaning, the covenant didn't work. Are you getting it? Yeah. Another one? Mm -hmm. The first was found wanting. Uh -huh. Another version? NIV? For if there had been nothing wrong, uh -huh. for if there had been nothing wrong with that first covenant, then, so meaning there was something wrong with the covenant, okay? Because, verse 8, because finding fault with them, he says. Now, question. Finding fault with them, who are they that have a fault? People. The people. Yeah. So who has a problem here? Is it the covenant or the people? Both. Them are both. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever the covenant was supposed to do to the people, the covenant brought a problem to the people. So when God looked at the people, he said, hey, this is not the way I intended. Yeah? I will do a new covenant. He didn't look at the covenant. He looked at the results in the people. If you read Jeremiah 31, it becomes clear, but maybe when I'm teaching on the curses, that is when I'll touch on this in a better way. You get the point? Because, just to mention, yeah, the curses is as a result of the covenant itself. By the way, there is nobody who suffered curses on account of the sins of their fathers before the covenant was given. Wakati Wahubiri Waraana Wanasema 
uh, Abraham lied and Jacob lied. Was Jacob lying a curse? Yeah? Was it a curse? Yeah? Ilikuwa ni lana. Ye aki aki akiwa mabibi waine ama mabibi wawili na maidu wawili unaona kama ako na lala ya yeah, naishi maisha yake jamaa by the way ametajirika sana si ndio it was a life barakas ni wakati you have misfortunes coming your way on account of the sins committed you understand Now when God spoke these words in Jeremiah 31 that I'll make a new covenant the reason was what he saw with the people the children of Judah they were already in captivity not because they have sinned somebody like Daniel they are in captivity why because of the sins of their fathers and God said I will do a new covenant and the new covenant was the solution for curses hallelujah in jeremiah 31 we can read there that is where the writer of hebrews is quoting from so the book of hebrews is not the scriptures the scriptures is where he is referring so we can say the writer of hebrews is not inspired to write He is depending on his understanding of the scriptures. So in Jeremiah 31 from verse 31 he says behold the days are coming says the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah not according to the covenant that i made with their fathers in the day that i took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of egypt my covenant which they broke though i was a husband to them says the lord this is jeremiah when the writer of hebrews is quoting the same and he says days are coming says the lord when i'll make a new covenant does he mean that we don't have the new covenant no he is proving the 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 need for the new covenant he is using that passage of scripture to prove that god saw the need for the second covenant But you can't read Hebrews to say that we are waiting for the new covenant. That is not what the writer of Hebrews is saying when he is quoting the scriptures. In the scriptures God promised I I will make a new covenant. Days are coming. In the days of the writer of Hebrews was he waiting? No. The covenant was in place. So he says that in verse 32 not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt my covenant which they meaning that the new covenant is not a modification of the old akisema siku zinakuja ambapo nitaweka agano jipya jameni ya agano jipya sio modification you cannot modify the old and say you have a new a new is new when god said i'll make a new covenant he meant a new and he continues to clarify he says that the new covenant shall not be the same as the one he made with their fathers when when they they walked out of the boat from the flood yeah 
when Adam ate the fruit. So when did this, when did the previous covenant start? Agano la kwanza katika Biblia ni gani? Sini agano ya Noah. So is that the covenant we are talking about? That was found to be faulty. Mm-hmm. Agano la pili. Abrahamic. Hayawa. Magano ni mengi yaliyo katika Biblia. Lakini tusiposikiza waandishi wenyewe watueleze agano ni gani wanazungumzia tutajijazia story zetu isn't it the right of hebrew anasema hivi for if that first covenant had been faultless then no place would have been sought for a second and he goes back to the quote in jeremiah and in jeremiah that is where god himself said not jeremiah god said days are coming says the lord when i not jeremiah god will make a new covenant which will be different from not noahic covenant not abrahamic covenant all right but this new covenant will be different from the one he made with their fathers the day he took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt and he tells us that that covenant they broke though i was a husband to them bana sifiwe we begin to get a clue of which covenant we are talking about isn't it we cannot talk about the noahic covenant we are not talking about abrahamic covenant but we are talking of a covenant that was made after they left egypt and it is that covenant that we notice that it was broken it is that covenant that is faulty and by now i think we have a clue what are some of the faults what does it do it brings blindness true when the covenant is read then a veil lies in the heart of men when men walk by that covenant when men relate with god by that covenant then they are veiled they are they are blinded and they are not able to see the glory of the light of christ you agree with me some of the religious things they have people have done they cannot be able to acknowledge and to appreciate the work christ did on the cross then equally Now let's go to Galatians. Galatians Paul is speaking, Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. I want to read from verse 21. Now the book of Galatian the foundation of that book is a problem that was in Galatian region where they had started to turn from the faith in Jesus to observing the law of Moses right from uh, chapter 1 Paul is dealing with the issue of faith and the law of moses so in chapter 4 verse 21 anasema hivi tell me you who desire to be under the law 
Do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondwoman and the other by a free woman. Now I have a question here. Do we have anything in the law about Abraham? Or let me put it this way. Do we have anything in the commandments about Abraham having two wives? No. So what is the meaning of the word law here? Does it mean the commandments? Or he is referring to Genesis? He is referring to the writings referred to as the law or the writings of Moses. Nadivizuri wakatuna soma, let's draw the meaning from the context, not from the dictionary. You need the definition from the dictionary, lakini sazingine tunaweza poteza maana kwa sababu hatusikizi muandishi kile anachozungumza bwana asifiwe so he says tell me you who desire to be under the law do you not hear the law for it is written that abraham had two sons the one by a bond woman and the other by a free woman verse 23 but he who was of the bond woman was born according to the flesh and he of the free woman through the promise verse 24 which things are symbolic for these are the two covenants the one from mount sinai which gives birth to bondage, which is hey Paul is saying you who want to be under the law, don't you hear what the law says? That Abraham had two sons. One son by a bond woman, a slave girl. And the other one by a free woman who is Sarah. And he says that these, these two women, they are symbolically representing the two covenants. The two women, one is a slave girl from Egypt. The other one is a free woman, that is Sarah. They stand for the two covenants. There is a covenant at Mount Sinai. Huh? And it does not give birth to freedom. It gives birth to bondage. Let me go back to verse 23. But he who was born according, he was born of the bond woman was born according to the flesh and he of the free woman through the that means the first covenant which is from Mount Sinai it gives birth to bondage true it is also of the flesh true the other one is of the promise are you getting the difference? We have two covenants here. One is of the flesh. The other one is of the promise. Verse 25 he says, For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to Jerusalem which, which is uh, which now is and is in bondage with our children. 
but the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. As it is written, Rejoice, O barren, you who do not bear, break forth with shout, you, uh, you who do not, you who are not in labor, for the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. Hallelujah. So, the first covenant is from Mount Sinai. It gives birth to bondage. It is of the flesh. And it corresponds with the Jerusalem that is now in bondage. Right? But the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. Hallelujah. Is your mother from Sinai or from above? Where when you are Ganogani? Hello? Kama unatembelea agano la kwanza. Si mama yako ni haga. Yeah? Na we ni mwana wa uhuru wa mawautumwa. Wautumwa. Waroho ama wamwili. <laughs> yeah? Our mother is not from Mount Sinai. <coughs> Our mother is the second covenant, which is Sarah, isn't it? Yes. Now listen to this, verse 28. It says, Now we brethren, now we, when Paul says we, what does that mean? He includes himself in the same basket with the audience. True? Yes. He says, Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of? Promise. So we are children of? Promise. Meaning, we are children of the first woman or the second. Who is our mother? Sarah. Sarah, isn't it? Meaning, we are of the second covenant, not the first covenant. That is what Paul is trying to say. Now we brethren, as Isaac was, are children of, the way Isaac was, so are we. Those that are of the first covenant, those that want to depend on the first covenant to relate with Jehovah, they are exactly as Ishmael was. True? He continues saying verse 29, But as he who was born according to the flesh then, persecuted him, was born according to the spirit, even so it is now. He says, but as he who was born according to the flesh then persecuted, him who was born according to the spirit. What does that mean? As he who was born according to the flesh, who is he? Ishmael. What did Ishmael do then? He persecuted Isaac. One who was of the flesh. One whose mother was Hagar. One whose mother is the first covenant. Persecuted the one that was born of the spirit. Born of the promise. Paul says, even so, it is now. 
meaning who are your persecutors are your persecutors demons and the devils who are your persecutors persecutions as it was then so it is now nisome verse 29 na version nyingine pengine yangu ina kasoro by the way those that walk according to the first old covenant can we say they walk in the spirit or in the flesh they in the flesh hata wakiongea kwa ruga they in the flesh eh what defines whether you are in the flesh or in the spirit is it speaking in tongues seeing visions prophesying no what determines whether you are in the spirit or in the flesh is your mother <laughs> if you are of the first covenant and we are going to see the first covenant then you are of the flesh and you are the persecutor of the sons of the second covenant you are the source of persecution nevertheless what does the scripture say cast out the bond woman and her son for the son of the bond woman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman, free woman. verse 31 so then brethren we are not children of the bond woman but of the free these two women they are symbolic they are representation they are not the covenants okay but they are a typology of the covenant if you want to understand the first covenant which now we know was given at mount sinai then you look at the free, the slave woman and you look at the children the son all right if the son got inheritance you will also receive inheritance from the lord if the first one got inheritance but the scripture say cast out the bond woman and her because the children the son of the bond woman shall not be here together with the son of the free woman sasa niko na swali wanao tembelea agano mzee na wanaambiwa watoe dhabihu ndio waweze kurithi wamekoniwa mawajakoniwa if you tell ishmael that there is something he can do to receive an inheritance from abraham was it not a lie we are not children of the bond woman meaning we are not children of the flesh we are not children of the first covenant we are not children of bondage so this first covenant it brings blindness true does it bring freedom or bondage so the second thing with the covenant it gives birth to bondage true number 3 the covenant is of the flesh not of the spirit can you inherit under the first covenant no so it does not give inheritance is that a problem with the people or the covenant it's the covenant isn't it 
Isn't it? And there are many other faults we can see from the covenant. We'll look at them. But the question we need to ask ourselves, which is this covenant? One, we know. It is from Mount Sinai, isn't it? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 1 Nasema Now the first covenant had regulations of regulations for worship and also anathri sanctuary So the writer of Hebrews when he says that the first covenant was faulty In chapter 9, he tells us something about that first covenant. It is the covenant that had two things. Ordinances of, of divine service or worship, or regulations of, for worship. And number two, that covenant had... How many covenants do we have in the Bible... That had a nursery sanctuary. Noic covenant irikwana sanctuary. Abrahamic covenant. So we want to look at the specifications of that covenant so that from the Bible we can be able to locate the covenant itself. That is the mother of bondage. True? So it is the covenant that had regulations of worship. It's not the other way around. It is not the regulations of worship that had the covenant. I want to make it clear. It is not the earthly sanctuary that had the covenant. It is the covenant that had regulations of worship and the sanctuary. This structure called the tabernacle was only built in Jerusalem and not in any other place in the earth. Ilitengenezwa uh, Jerusalem. Now by the way, the sanctuary was not a place of congregation. Ukisoma pia chini nasema, when this sanctuary was prepared, the high priest from the tribe of Revi entered there every day to offer services. But in the Holy of Holies, he entered the high priest, not the priest. The high priest entered once can you imagine this? Behind the sanctuary was a no-go zone. Even for the priests. The only person that entered in the Holy of Holies was the high priest, a Revite from the ruins of Aaron. Is it clear? Yes. But the sanctuary was only used by the priests. Can you see it was not a place of congregation? Atimali watu wanaenda kuimba nyimbo za, you know, sifa. Ukija katika the, what you call the the tabernacle, uliingia kwa gate peke yake, and by the way, with thanksgiving. I will enter his gates. I will enter his courts with praise. Ungefika wapi? Hapo. Hapo kuingine. No go zone. Muna kutana na revite. Unapatia na ya. That's why he said, no one is supposed to come before the Lord empty handed. Kama hauna kitu, 
huko unaenda kufanya nini so you came with with a sacrifice you gave it to the revites and the revites would slaughter your your sacrifice uh, do the ritual according to the law and then you go home it was not a place to congregate the only covenant that had an earthly place of worship plus the regulations of worship the how to worship god is that old covenant sijika ma noic covenant ilikuwa na the way to worship ilikuwa na regulations of how to worship what about abrahamic the only covenant that had regulations of worship and a place another place of worshiping was the first covenant hebrews 9 verse 16 he says in the case of a will it is necessary to prove the death of the one who made it or the death of the testator okay in the case of a will it is necessary that the death of the testator be proved because a will is in force only when somebody has died it never takes effect while the one who made it is alive hallelujah verse 18 this is why even the first covenant was not put into effect without blood now we are getting a clue here about the first covenant he says This is why even the first covenant was not put into effect without blood. When Moses had proclaimed every commandment of the law to all the people, he took the blood of cows together with water, scarlet wool and uh, branches of hyssop and sprinkled the scroll and all the people he said this is the blood of the covenant which god has has commanded you to keep in the same way he sprinkled the blood both uh he sprinkled with the blood both the tabernacle and everything used in its ceremonies in fact the law requires that nearly everything be be cleansed with the blood and without the shedding of blood there is no remission or forgiveness now right there we know that the first covenant was dedicated by Moses true the first covenant was dedicated by Moses and we also notice that it is during the dedication that he also dedicated the sanctuary or rather the tabernacle so the covenant came with the tabernacle hallelujah Nashika hii. Now, I have a question here. If the covenant, if the first covenant is books, the 39 books. Are we suggesting that Moses dedicated the book of Genesis? Are we suggesting that Moses was there to dedicate the book of Joshua? in the book of marakai what is this that moses dedicated the first co-
covenant, one, we have seen from verse one, it had regulations of worship and an earthly sanctuary. Number two, the coven, the first covenant was actually dedicated by Moses. Was Abraham there? Yeah? He was he was long dead, isn't it? Jacob is dead. Joseph is dead. When Moses is dedicating the first covenant, it is actually 200, 2,500 years from Adam. And from Galatians chapter 4, we noted that the first covenant was actually from Mount Sinai. We are trying to, to locate the covenant by looking at the specification given in the Bible, isn't it? Yes. One, it is a covenant that had regulations of worship and an earthly sanctuary. Number two, it is a covenant that was dedicated by Moses with the blood of cows and bulls, isn't it? And number three, it is a covenant from Galatians chapter 4. It is a covenant that was given at Mount Sinai. We also read Jeremiah 31 where God said that the new covenant will not be according to the covenant that I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Isn't it? Meaning, the covenant that was in force in the days of Jeremiah was a covenant that began after the children of Israel left Egypt. We have four witnesses of which covenant we are talking about, isn't it? And the specification of the covenant from the Bible, they isolate only one covenant. Hatuwezi tukaenda kwa Noah kwa sababu specification azijatupeleka kwa Noah. Kama ingetuambia the covenant I made with Noah after the flood. Then we would have gone to But now it is a covenant that was dedicated by Moses. It is a covenant from Mount Sinai. It's a covenant that was broken by their fathers, all right? And they were given when they were leaving, when they left Egypt, isn't it? So if we want to understand which covenant this one is, where do we go? Should we go to the first page of the Bible? And find a plain paper that says old Testament. Is this the place where we should refer? I wish Paul told us that the first covenant was made before Genesis. We would have come here. From Hebrews chapter 9, we have seen that Moses dedicated the covenant, isn't it? And we can find that event in Exodus chapter 24. I'll not give a lot of background story before uh, Exodus 24. Okay? Exodus uh, from chapter 19, that is when uh, they leave Egypt. You know the story, uh, what happened in Egypt, your pharaoh aweze Okay? And then how the Red Sea parted, then uh, they closed, the sea parted, uh, closed again. And now they found themselves in the wilderness. They journeyed through a, a wrong route, and finally they landed at Mount Sinai on the third month. That is in chapter 19. And in chapter 19, uh, when they came to Mount Sinai, 
God spoke to Moses and he told Moses what ambia watu wao ambia watu waoge nitawatembelea on the third day you know from the time they left Egypt to when they came to Mount Sinai imagine three months in the wilderness walikuwa naogea wapi by the way hmm? so you can imagine watu wananuka kama tusenge <laughs> Mungu akasema waoge na wafue nguo za Then I'll talk to them. <laughs> Ama unafikiria waliambiwa waoge sababu Hata wewe ukiwa Mungu ungekuja kuongelesha hawa watu. And you're coming from a holy throne and then ukuta watu miezi tatu hawajaoga wamekuwa kwa safari. So akambua waoge na wafue nguo za nguo za then on the that day God will speak to them and so they did exactly that wakaoga uh, wakafua manguo and they were clean to meet a clean God amen so God spoke to them uh, I'm trying to cut the story He spoke to them audibly he gave them the 10 commandments audibly then they said i don't think we are able to handle this they told moses tell god not to speak to us you go talk to him come and tell us we will hear okay then they left they left the the mountain with the drew to the camp and moses was left there with god and god give give him some more instructions so exodus chapter 20 you can see god spoke all these words saying okay and he give them the ten commandment can you see that chapter 20 is actually the list of the ten commandments then in verse 18 Now all the people witnessed the thundering the writing fl- writing flashes the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking and when the people saw it they trembled and stood afar off uh, then they said to Moses you speak with us and we will hear but let not God speak to us lest we die and Moses said to the people do not be do not fear for god has come to test you and that his his fear may be before you so that you may not sin so the people stood afar off, afar off but moses drew near the thick darkness where god was then in verse 20 then the lord said to Moses now this time god is no longer speaking audibly to the people he is speaking to Moses where are the people they are standing afar off from the mountain the lord said to Moses thus you shall say to the children of Israel you have seen that i have talked with you from heaven you shall not make any anything to be with me gods of silver or gold or gods of gold you shall not make for yourselves you shall not make for yourself verse 24 an altar on earth you shall make for me who is speaking telling who moses an altar of earth you shall make for me and you shall not and you shall sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and your peace offering your sheep and your oxen in in every place where i record my name my name i will 
come to you and will bless you. And if you make me an altar of stone, you shall not build it of what? Of hewed stones. For if you use your tool on it, you have performed it or you have defiled it. Nor shall you go up by steps to my altar that your nakedness may not be exposed on it. Can you get the instructions? God instructed Moses how he should build what? An altar. Niko na hii swari moja tu. The altars mumekuwa mkijishikanisha nazo. Zimejengwa na hizi specifications. Mungu alisema zisijengwe zisi namna gani? Zisijengwe kwa mawe ya kuchongwa. True? Zile huwa mnaambiwa zimechongewa mawe. Number two, zisiwe na stairs kwa sababu gani? Ndiyo sionyeshe by the ni wamama wanaambiwa hapa ama ni wazee kwani walikuwa na vaje eh yeah? ni kanjo kwa hivyo wakipanda stairs <laughs> wanaonyesha madhabahu ya Mungu uchi sasa wanaoambiwa wasivae nguo za wanaume. Swali, nguo za wanaume ni gani? Sio so, I think una mali tulibadilishiwa eh. Wala <laughs> sio. Now, the altar that God specified had no stairs na haikujengwa kwa mawe ya kuchongwa. Sasa ndorere wakisema wana madhabahu wameinua madhabahu kwanza mawe yamechongwa tu yamewekwa stairs unaona kama ni madhabahu ya Jehova ama ya shetani Hiyo nitakuachia ujijazi ujijazie So God gave the instruction chapter 21 He says Now these are the judgments which you shall set before them can you get that so in chapter 20 god spoke words audibly to the people okay and they are referred to us the 10 commandments is referred to us words can you see that these are the words but when we come to chapter 21 god is speaking to moses not to the people and he is saying now these are the judgments question is there a difference between the words and the judgments what are the difference you only need to go through the list of the judgments and, and see how different they are from the 10 commandments this is where the instructions of how a one should marry if you go and uh, rape a virgin then you are supposed to go to the father of the girl and pay a bride price right if two men are fighting and one chops off the eye of the other then the eye of the other one should also be because it's a knife for Have you ever gone through these judgments anyway? Yes. This is where you're told if you if you plant do not plant two types of seeds on the same. Huwezi panda mahindi na upande maharagwe katikati. Those are judgments, right? Nikani nyingine umeona hebu angalia tuangalie hizo judgments kidogo.
Chapter 22, if a man steals an ox or a sheep and slaughter, eh? and slaughter it or sell it, he shall restore five ox for an ox. Can you get that? Those are judgments. Ukiwa nandume, igonge mtu iwe, then wewe na yondume, iuliwe. Those are judgments. Uki, ukichimba shimo Your neighbor anguke ndani na avunjike mguu Then unatakiwa kufut the bill mpaka apone Those are judgments They are different from the Ten Commandments Ten Commandments They are words that God spoke audibly This one he gave to Moses and they are many can you see that? Chapter 23, he's still giving the same. You shall not circulate a false report. So those are the judgments. Judgments, they were statutes that were given to govern the way they should relate with one another. I wanted to show you the difference. They are words and they are judgments. Now, when we come to chapter 24... I want to read from verse 3. Moses is instructed now to go to the people and go and bring, maybe let me read verse 1. Now he said to Moses, come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the 70 of the elders of Israel, and worship from afar. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come near nor shall, they, shall the people go up with him. Verse 3, So Moses came and told the people what? Please note the difference. When Moses now came down from the mountain, he told the people all the words referring to the Ten Commandments and all the judgment and all the people answered with one voice and said all the words which the Lord has said we will do verse 4 and Moses wrote all the judgments did he write the judgments or words Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and he arose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain, and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Then he sent young men of the children of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrifice, and sacrificed peace offering of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basin, and half the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Verse 7. Then he took the book. Which book is this? What did Moses write? Where did he write it? In a book. So he took the book of the covenant and read it and read in the hearing of the people and they said, all that the Lord has said we will do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood, uh, sprinkled it on the people and said, This is the blood of the covenant which the Lord has, com uh, has made with you according to all these words. Now, question. What did Moses write in a book? Is the Ten Commandments, right? Now, when, when the writer of Hebrews quotes this story or mentions this story and tells us that Moses, the first covenant was dedicated by Moses, what did Moses dedicate? It's the Ten Commandments, isn't it? Yes. Meaning, the Ten Commandments is actually the old 
covenant. Let's go to chapter 34. Chapter 34 verse 27. Nasema hivi. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write these words, for according to the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. Verse 28. So he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water. And he wrote, who wrote? Moses or God? God. If you're reading from King James, you notice he differentiates the he, Moses, and the he, God, by putting the capital letter, isn't it? And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the ten commandments. Can you see that? So the ten commandments is what was given by God at Mount Sinai and that is what Moses dedicated and that is what is referred to as the old covenant. Can you see that? Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 11. Now Deuteronomy is 40 years after Exodus. Okay? The event as narrated in Exodus, it takes 40 years later for Moses to remind them what happened at Mount Sinai. Okay? So he's telling them, Then you came near and stood at the foot of the mountain, and the mountain burnt with fire to the midst of the heaven, with darkness, crowd and thick darkness, and the Lord spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the sound of words, but saw no form. You only heard a voice. Verse 13. God declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform. The ten commandments. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you the statutes and judgments that you, may, that you might observe them in the land which you cross over to possess. Can you see that? So God spoke to them the Ten Commandments and he wrote them on tablets as a covenant. And then he gave Moses the statutes and judgments to teach the children of Israel, right? In chapter 5, Deuteronomy, we are only confirming that what Paul was saying, what is spoken in Hebrew, is actually what we find in at Mount Sinai, isn't it? Deuteronomy chapter 5 from verse 1, And Moses called all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your hearing today, that you may learn them and be careful to observe them. Verse 2. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. The Lord did not make this covenant with our fathers. Can you see that? But with us, those who are here today, all of us who are alive, the Lord talked with you face to face on the mountain from the midst of the fire. I stood between the Lord and you at that time to declare to you the word of the Lord, for you were afraid because of the fire and you did not go up to the mountain. He said. Now, please note that from there, Moses repeats what God said and he gives the Ten Commandments. Can you see that? Verse 22, he says, These words the Lord spoke to all your assembly in 
the mountain from the midst of the fire, the cloud and thick darkness, the with a loud voice, and he added no more, and he wrote them on two tablets of stone and gave them to me. Meaning, what is the old covenant? It's the Ten Commandments, isn't it? Now, Moses, when he's speaking, he's saying that this covenant God did not make with our fathers. What does it mean? Abraham, alikuwa na Ten Commandments, as some people teach. The Ten Commandments were not in existence before Mount Sinai. That covenant of the law was only given to those that were on the mountain, not those who were before. That is what Moses is saying, isn't it? Unless we want to be wiser than Moses. To say me Adam alikuwa pia na the same. Praise the Lord. Let's go to chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10. Let me read from verse 1. He says, At that time, the Lord said to me, Heal for yourselves two tablets of stone like the first one. You remember this is after Moses had broken the, the first tablet. Do you know that? So he is, he is reciting or he is reminding them what actually happened. So the Lord said to me, Heal for yourself two tablets of stone like the first one and come up to me on the mountain and and make make yourself an ark of wood and I will write on the tablets the words that were on the first tablets which you broke and you shall put them in the ark. Unona the purpose of the ark? Nini? To put the tablets in. Kueka mawe. Yale mawiri ya agano, isn't it? Sana unaona kwa nini naitwa sanduku? Ni sanduku la kwa sababu linabebea agano. Kama alikuwa anapewa misumari, ingeitwa sanduku la misumari. Simple. Hakuna uroho hapa. Sasa mtu akija akwambie ati you need to, to prepare a knack of the covenant in your heart. How do you do that? <laughs> How do you do that? Tell your neighbor, irikuwa ni sanduku. Eh, period. Na iridengwa kwa sababu ya the covenant, isn't it? It is the covenant that demanded unajua baada ya kuvunja za kwanza i think mungu akaona nimetumia 40 days afu in one go huyu jamaa amevunja we before ukuje hapa utengeneze sadu ndio nikikupatia kale ka ujinga ulifanya usifanye uende uweke haya haya mawe wapi kwa hiyo sanduku na this time wewe ndio utachonga hiyo mawe sio mimi Verse 3 nasema So I made an ark of acacia wood Hewed two tablets of stone like the first one And went up to the mountain Having the two tablets in my hands Verse 4 And he, he wrote on the tablets According to the first writing The ten commandment Which the Lord had spoken to you in the mountain from the midst of the fire on the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them to me. Then I turned and came down from the mountain and put the tablets in the ark which I had made and they are there just as the Lord 
commanded me. Can you see that? So what is the old covenant? Is the Ten Commandments. True? So that means if your walk with God is based on the Ten Commandments, who is your mother? A guy. Can you get any inheritance? No. Could it be the reason why he does not open the door for them? He asks them to tithe so that he may open windows. Unafunguliwa <laughs> madirisha? <laughs> 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 Ukifunguriwa dirisha ni kusema you maybe are not a son. Right? Yes. Where are the son? Do they go through the window or through the door? <laughs> if your walk with God is based on the law of Moses, are you walking in the spirit or in the flesh? Let's read Exodus, Exodus 32 verse 15. Asema, and Moses turned and went down from the mountain, and the two tablets of the testimony were in his hands. The tablets, listen to this, the tablets were written on both sides. On the one side and on the other they were written. Now the tablets was the work of God and the writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablet. Do you understand engraving? What is engraving? Kuchonga, right? So, the, the writing of the tablets was not the work of Moses. It is God who wrote on the tablets and he engraved the writings on both sides uh, of the tablets, isn't it? 31, Exodus 31 verse 18, in a semahivi, And when he had made the end of speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone, written with the finger of so the point is very clear the old covenant is the ten commandments that were written or engraved on the tablets of stone and they were kept where in the ark of the covenant isn't it let's go back to second corinthians chapter 3 This time I want, I want us to read from verse 4 so that now we can flow with the thought. To quote Mesoma verse 14 where he says, But their minds were blinded for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. Isn't it? So now let's understand from Paul what he refers to as the Old Testament because we already have the characteristics of the covenant and we have the specifications of the covenant, isn't it? So, from verse 4 he says, And we have such trust through Christ towards God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us Sufficient ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of, but of the spirit. spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Alright? So we have been made sufficient ministers of the new covenant. 
verse 7 he says, he says this, but if the ministry of death written and engraved on stone was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? Question here. What has Paul referred to as the ministry of death? The one that God engraved on stones. Which one is that? So the Ten Commandment is a ministry of death. Now, more faults of the covenant. Though it was given, it was a ministry of death. And the New Covenant is referred to as the ministry of of the spirit how will the ministry of the spirit not be more glorious sasa wale wanao hudumu wakiwa wamesimamia sheria za Musa na regulation za ibada remember back in Hebrews 9 that the first covenant which now we know is the 10 commandment had regulations of worship there was a way to worship God under that first covenant. You could not worship God anyhow. He even specified how the altar was to be built. When you start worshiping God today in the way of the law, you're serving which ministry? Now, where do we find tithing? When you read Marakai, we are talking of tithing according to which order? The order of the law. It is under the first covenant where an ark of the covenant was demanded, right? And the ark of the covenant demanded a sanctuary, a house, a place to keep it. We see in Hebrews, that uh, Hebrews chapter 9, that the first part called the sanctuary, we had the lampstand, the menorah, the table, and the showbread. Then behind the veil was the second part. What was in, kept in the second part? The Ark of the Covenant overlaid uh, with gold on all sides. What was inside the Ark? The tablets of stone or the tablets of the Covenant. When the Covenant was given, the Covenant demanded a place to keep it, right? And so a box was made. And a box demanded a place, a shelter. And so, the tabernacle was prepared. Hallelujah. Now, because of the work of the tabernacle, then a people called the Revites were chosen. The servicemen. The service Their work was to officiate inside that that tabernacle because not everybody would get there. If you made a mistake to enter there and you're not from the tribe of Revi, you are stricken with a plague. And that's how when uh, in the year King Uzziah died. What happened? Uzziah entered in the temple which was against 
the law or the covenant and he was struck with leprosy he was taken into an isolation and he died in his house so the year he died is the year Isaiah saw the Lord hallelujah so you don't need Isaiah to die in your life it's a historical <laughs> It's a historical element. So nobody was permitted to officiate in, inside the temple unless you had come from the tribe of Revi. You're getting me? Now, because of the work of the tabernacle, God decided to give them the tenth of all that is produced in Israel by their brethren. And that is what we call the tithe. So when you are tithing, if you pick any element of tithing, either you are picking from Marakai or from Reviticus, then you are discussing the tithing of the law. There is one preacher who was telling people you cannot be blessed by tithing according to the law. So we tithe according to Abraham. The foolish thing is this. He later gives the people envelopes for tithing, written Leviticus 18. If you tithe according to Abraham, before you even met, meet Melchizedek, utakuwa ndani. Kwa sababu utakuwa umepika watu ngeta na umeshikwa, right? So you can't teach tithing anywhere from Leviticus to Matthew 23. Because that time the old covenant is in force. Any tithing you discuss here is actually tithing according to the first covenant. It is an ordinance of worship under the first covenant. When you tell people to give first fruit, redeeming firstborn, you are a minister of death. And if you are the mushirika, you are being ministered death. And if you are the supporter, you are the, you are the supporter of the ministry of? Yeah. Verse 9 he says, For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in? Now, the same thing Paul referred to as the ministry of death, he has also called it the ministry of? By the way, who is served the ministry of the law? And he went home rejoicing and happy with the Lord. And not guilty. Kama kwenu Kuna wasichana hawaolewi. Kuna raana. Nasomewa kama mstari kengine. Kama kwenu mbuzi hazizai. Kuna raana. Kama kwenu huwa munakohoa. Kuna raana. <laughs> Everybody razima ingisho kikaputa. Laana from there. The only way to break a, 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 a curse is by sacrifice. Amen? Amen. It is just a scheme to make money. Either you are standing in the old covenant or you are standing on the new covenant. And we have been made sufficient ministers of the new covenant, not the old. 
Lakini kwa sababu ya kutojua agano mzee ni gani, we are all over because we were told the old covenant ni vitabu. Kwa sababu we don't know how to apply that, then we need the Bible is the word of God. Hata kuna mahali nilikuwa ngechukua nasema this is the word of God. I love it. I came to realize the word of God is here, but this is not the word of God. This is a collection of books where we have the scriptures and the epistles. So he says in verse uh, 11, verse 10, For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excel. Please notice that Paul is comparing the two covenant the old covenant or testament and the new and he's saying if the first one had glory the second one has more glory if the ministry of death had glory the ministry of the spirit has more if the ministry of condemnation had glory the ministry of uh, righteousness exceeds much more in Glory. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is more glorious. glorious. Verse 12. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a veil on his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day when Moses is read a veil lies on their hearts. Nevertheless when one turns to the Lord the veil is can you see that? Can you see now what Paul is calling the Old Testament or the Old Covenant? Yes. It is the Ten Commandment that brings blindness, that is a ministry of death, that is a ministry of the flesh, that is a ministry of bondage, a ministry of condemnation, a ministry that is passing away, a ministry that is likened with Hagar, the slave girl. Paul told us in Galatians chapter 4 that as the son of Hagar persecuted the son of Sarah, then even so it is meaning who are the persecutors? Who are the persecutors of those who walk by the new covenant? It is those who are of the law, isn't it? Yeah. Is it clear now? Yeah. The preachers of tithing and sacrifices, they are the enemy of the cross and the enemy of the grace of God. I'm a son of God. By the power of mercy. <laughs> yeah? Amen. So who can bring a, a case against you? When the power of mercy is activated. Yeah? Who? Tell your neighbor, it's not my goodness. I was a criminal. It is the power of mercy. <laughs> I am free by the power of mercy. Sasa anaye kuambia sijui I think kenye unapitia ni kiboko ya Bwana. Anaelewa the power of mercy. Do they understand? 
ati Mungu atatuma divaura kwako ati kwa sababu ukutoa fungu la 10 mashiringi do they know the power of mercy do they preach mercy or judgment and condemnation the power of mercy was activated when Christ died before Christ died all that God did was to promise a time is coming a time is coming and I'll make a new covenant you will not suffer like this anymore that time I'll forgive your sins and your lawless deeds I will remember no more tell your neighbor the power of mercy, power of mercy. but that was only a promise when Christ died the bible says that he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of his death not his birth meaning the new covenant began not with Matthew chapter 1 the new covenant began when Christ died and that is when mercy became available the mercy became available in fact the first beneficiary of the masses were the thieves hmm? the power of mercy the forgiveness of sin could not be available under the first covenant the forgiveness of sin is only available under the under the new amen, amen. so you cannot invoke any article of the law to get a blessing from god mm -mm. kama msimamo wako sio neema ya mungu sio agano jipya ni sheria ya musa then wewe ni mtoto wa wahaga na nakuogopa kwa sababu wewe ndio unaleta persecution <laughs> either you are serving from the ministry of death where your righteousness your walk with god is based on the 10 commandments or you are depending on the new covenant that was founded on the death of jesus christ you cannot mix the two it's not possible When you read Hebrews chapter 8 verse 13 The writer of Hebrews remember he is he is putting his argument he is using the scripture to bring a point isn't it And he says in verse 13 in that he says a new covenant can you see it there in quotes He is still referring to Jeremiah 31 where god said i will make a new covenant so anasema hivi in that he says a new covenant he has made the first obsolete now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away so the first covenant when god said i will make a new covenant he made the other one unusable Some version says it's he put it in a shelf where it is gathering dust after we changed the constitution in Kenya what can you do with the old constitution what can you do anything only to gather dust that is exactly what happened with the 10 commandments he did away with it and the 10 commandments is no longer the standard of righteousness before god you do not become righteous by the law message ndio inasema hivi by coming up with a new plan the new covenant between god and his people god put the old plan on the shelf and there it stays gathering dust 
Hallelujah. You get that? So the old covenant is obsolete. Hebrews 7 verse 18 he says for on the other hand there is an annulling of the former commandments because of its weakness and unprofitableness. For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is a bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. And in as much as he, uh, he was not made priest without an oath. Verse 21, for they have become priest without an oath but he with an oath by him who said to him the Lord has sworn and will not relent you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek by so much more Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. So if we have a better covenant, the first one was useless, it was weak, it was unprofitable. What would you be doing with it when we have a better covenant? And those who think that the law of Moses in our hearts is the new covenant. I have a question. A faulty, weak covenant that brings bondage was transferred from the stone to our hearts. Huh? And then you call it new. Do you think God transferred the Ten Commandments from a stone into our hearts and call it a new covenant. Maybe the old covenant was the stone and now the heart is the new covenant. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Paul, in Romans 7, categorically proves that any relationship with the law. Anyone who is in Christ interacting with the law is an adulterer. Yeah? Romans chapter 7. We have been delivered from the law. Okay? So that we may be married to him that was raised from the dead. So having a relationship with the law is a marriage and you cannot be married to Jesus Christ and you're married to Mr. Law. You are unfaithful. Nimpango ya kando. It is adultery. So wakati tunambiwa adulterers Hawata ingia binguni. Si sasa unaanza kuona. Hmm? Wameja kwa makiosk. Somebody may ask, now what do we do? We kill because we, are, we don't have the law. With the law, did you stop killing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah? You know, there is a, a very foolish question. Are you saying now we, we, we sin? Who stopped sinning because they had the law? The law came to prove you are indeed a sinner. Haikuja kukusaidia. In fact, Paul says in Romans that the law was given to silence every mouth. Yani kuambia every mouth, shut up. You are as guilty as as charged. The law came to reveal 
the sinful state of men. The desperate sinful state. The Lord didn't come to help you from that sinful state. It is only in the grace of Christ that you are set free from the law of sin and death. The grace teaches you to say no to ungodliness. We'll come to talk about ungodliness. I've explained what is righteousness. Righteousness as a position and righteousness as what you do. The law of love. That's it. So the law of the world, wanting everything your way, wanting everything for yourself. You know, the rust of the eyes, the rust of the flesh, the pride of life. That life is what is referred to as unrighteousness. So the grace of God is the only thing that helps us to say no to that form of life. Not the law. So mtu wakiuliza, sasa tufanye dhambi. Who said? Hmm? And who stopped because they had the law? Who stopped? Iko. We are only saying that the power of mercy has been invoked. You are free. You are pardoned. Hallelujah. 